just remember, you still have your life to live. Enjoy your holidays with family and friends. One or two days of not adhering to your typical healthy eating will not harm you. You just need to make sure you don't lose a week, then two weeks, then three weeks. Set yourself a day to get back on track after the big meal gatherings with both your healthy eating and activity and stick to it. Put an alert on your phone as a reminder of that date. When you're eating those big meals, try to choose smaller amounts of the higher carbohydrate foods, such as potatoes and rice and pasta and breads and desserts. Pile up on the turkey or the high protein foods. You'll feel more full for longer, for a longer period of time with high protein. And that's as long as you're not on a protein reduced diet because of kidney issues. So listen to your healthcare provider for that. Try to limit the amount of pre-meal appetizers and bowls of goodies that are around the house. We always know that there's something to snack on there. And see if you can incorporate a family walk or some form of activity into your gatherings. Everyone can benefit. Knowledge is power. We're a society who demands information. Try to get your information about diabetes from reputable sites like Diabetes Canada, though. They only publish information based on the most accurate and current research available. You are the driver of your own boat. You're given one body to look after for your lifetime. So despite well-intentioned family and friends with information that they read on social media, you need to advocate for your own decisions. Be patient with your loved ones, though. They might truly believe the information that they've read. Patiently explain that you're basing the decisions on the management of diabetes in collaboration with your healthcare team, and you appreciate that they care about you enough to want to talk to you about this and hope that they support you in your decisions. And hey, maybe they've got a good suggestion that you can take to your diabetes team to discuss. Be kind to yourself. You can't change a lifetime of habits all at once. How many of us have done a really well on a diet for three months only to fall off the wagon? Take one habit to work on until you're solidly comfortable with that lifestyle change. Perhaps it's that big glass of juice or that coffee with triple sugar that you put in it every morning. Water down the juice gradually. You'd be surprised at how good it can taste when you just put a little more water in it every few days. And then you may want to eliminate the juice altogether. Same thing with the coffee. Maybe you want to, you have three sugars. You want to try 2.5 for a week. See how that goes. Go down to two sugars. You can actually wean yourself off the taste of things if you take it slowly. Habits can take time to change, so don't fret if you're moving at a slower pace than you want. During the holidays, if you're comfortable telling your family about your diagnosis, by all means do so. You'd be surprised at the lengths your loved ones will go to in order to accommodate your goals, things like sugar-free desserts or reduced carbohydrate in other recipes. They want to help. If you're not comfortable telling people, then just try to choose some low, lower carbohydrate foods and take smaller amounts of the foods that are higher in carbohydrate. Try to incorporate a little bit of activity into the day over the holidays to offset those meals. Walking, skating, or any other activity that fits into your lifestyle abilities. If you change your entire lifestyle at once, it won't be sustainable. And then you'll beat yourself up for failing just take it slow and one step at a time. 